Hello, and welcome to another episode of Be Inspired. I'm Michael Patton, and my wife, Tina Patton, we are your hosts for today. Today, we have joined with us Derek and Leslie Wesley, and they are the owners and operators of Reposition, Inc. We're looking forward to them sharing some tidbits with us in regards to how to navigate your finances. We look forward to you viewing in and catching uh, the information that will be shared in the show today. Hello and welcome to the show Be Inspired. I'm Michael Patton. And I'm Tina Patton. And we're your hosts for the show. We have with us today Derek and Leslie Wesley from Reposition Inc. And they're going to come and talk with us about navigating your finances. We're looking forward to them sharing with us some tidbits that I believe will be helpful to all of us today to in, be inspired to have budgets, to be inspired as well uh, to get our financial house in order. Derek and Leslie, welcome. Thank you. Well, Thanks thank for you. having us. Thanks for We're having excited. Us. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, finances are near and dear to our heart. Yeah. Today, so, Both um, of us working in the industry yes. at one point. Mm -hmm. And uh, certainly we'd love for you to tell us a little bit about yourselves. Well, I am uh, Leslie Wesley. I'm a native of uh, South Bend. Mm -hmm. um, born and raised here. Um, and very excited. Um, we're also owners of a business, State Farm Insurance. Mm -hmm. um, and so big advocate and um, um, youth developer here in South Bend. Mm -hmm. So we just like to empower people. So our mission um, started years ago when we said we wanted to start helping people with their finances. Mm -hmm. And so sure. that's pretty much, but I'm gonna let my husband kind of introduce um, himself to the audience. And then that way we'll tell you a little bit about repositioning. Sure. Thanks for having us. And yeah. uh, Derek Wesley and uh, from South Bend, Indiana. Went to Ball State University and uh, been in the financial services business for about 27 years. Okay. And doing that, uh, learned that we were probably handling money the wrong way. Mm -hmm. sure. And uh, was um, started reading a lot of books about finance and how to handle finance, and found out that most of the books that I've read come back to the, basically the Bible on how to handle money. Sure. And so uh, we thought that uh, we would share what has worked for us and our family right. with uh, others in our community. Yeah, mm -hmm. great. Well, you know, it's interesting that he would talk about, you know, all starting with the Bible. Uh, That's right. Michael, you and I have written a book ourselves, um, God's Plan for Financial mm -hmm. Prosperity and Success. Sure. And it, of course, gives those basic pr principles about tithing and giving mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. having wisdom enough to save. That's right. Um, mm -hmm. But we're here with you, and we're just really so happy that you're here with us today. Mm -hmm. So what are some of your, your simple techniques for uh, jump-starting your credit so you know everybody's talking about finances so what yeah. can you offer yeah. people in really jump-starting their credit jump-starting well one of the things my background um, I also had a background in banking mm -hmm. and uh, mortgages and also still a, a, a licensed managing broker now mm -hmm. with the state so I had hold my license in, in real estate and so in my background when we start talking about your credit and your credit report um, your credit report is really something that you really should pull every year. Mm. Um, and, and, and you really have to really attack your credit. Um, I was one, which was different from my husband, of saying, you know, I came from the background of my credit was not always perfect. Mm -hmm. um, I wasn't always a good steward. I wasn't mm -hmm. always a good steward of, of managing my money. Mm -hmm. And I just thought, oh, you know, I'll buy it now, pay for it later. Mm -hmm. sure. So I would really... Um, share with the audience that it's very, very important to really look at your credit and mm -hmm. to know that your credit is credibility. Mm. That's right. When it's time mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. you to buy something or to get something, that's when it really becomes very important. Mm -hmm. And so I share now sure. even with our children of the importance of making sure mm -hmm. that you keep your credit in order. Mm -hmm. Very good. Sure. Very and good. there are a number of other things that can help people to jumpstart their credit as well. Mm -hmm. Um, having a banking background as yourself, mm -hmm. Leslie, I actually worked in retail banking. Mm -hmm. And so one of the things that I learned while working in retail banking is that they have credit starter loans. Mm -hmm. Every uh, mm -hmm. bank or every institution mm -hmm. and credit union mm -hmm. gives you an opportunity to get your credit started through this mm -hmm. process called mm -hmm. credit starter loans. Mm -hmm. Credit starter loan is a, a loan a simple loan mm -hmm. uh, that uses collateral. Mm -hmm. So normally you can use a CD, uh, you can 
uh, acquire a loan, mm -hmm. 500, 1,000, 2,000 mm -hmm. dollars, and mm -hmm. they turn it into a CD for mm -hmm. you. And that becomes your collateral for a 12 month, a 24 mm -hmm. month loan, mm -hmm. which at that point, you mm -hmm. now have an opportunity to make payments on mm -hmm. a 12 month, a 24 mm -hmm. month loan, mm -hmm. and you build your credit from there, and you get started and position yourself now for the next. The mm -hmm. next may be a new car, the next may be a house. Whatever the next is for you mm -hmm. in that lending uh, opportunity, you build your credit in the sense that where you show that you can make payments and you have credibility mm -hmm. uh, as well at the same time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's a number of things that you can do when you talk about jump starting your credit. Mm -hmm. That's just one way. There are mm -hmm. several other ways mm -hmm. that we could talk about. However, um, it's important um, to do the simple things. Right. Um, many times people are turned down because they've not done simple things mm -hmm. like uh, acquire a credit, uh, a checking account, acquire right. uh, a savings account. Uh, many times we don't go in and we don't talk to the branch manager or the mm -hmm. customer service people to get information to help us to learn how to navigate our finances mm -hmm. as we are uh, dealing with the institution that we have our money in. Mm -hmm. So I think it's important that uh, we do some of those kind of things as we establish our credit and mm -hmm. we establish ourselves with an institution or a credit union mm -hmm. who can be helpful to us as we forge forward mm -hmm. and we build our family and as well we tap into other opportunities mm -hmm. that will be afforded to us. That's right. You know, let's get started talking about something um, which is we want to make Derek to share, but mm -hmm. um, when one, when you're a couple and one of you is maybe frugal yeah. and maybe the other not as a spendthrift, <laughs> but you just are different in mm -hmm. that. Uh -huh. So evidently you all had to navigate your way through that in your mm -hmm. marriage. Mm -hmm. Can you give other couples, mm -hmm. maybe young couples just starting out or maybe older couples, but again, one of them is kind of frugal, the other one uh, maybe not so much. Mm -hmm. Give us some tips or techniques or something that couples can really do to kind of help that situation along mm -hmm. and then yeah. still kind of build on their build on financial uh, uh, rapport. Yeah, I think one of the first things we do is recognize that we have different spending habits and, mm -hmm. and we, were, mm -hmm. we were taught differently how to handle money. Mm -hmm. sure. And uh, it doesn't make one right, doesn't make one wrong, but I think we can celebrate each of our ways of how we spend money mm -hmm. but come together to, as a couple and manage, navigate, communicate mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. how we want to run now our yes. little household sure. business. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, we are co-CEOs of our household. Mm -hmm. gotcha. And so uh, what we really do is we basically started out with a budget. Mm -hmm. You know, that's, that's our main tool. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But uh, we do recognize that we have different uh, back backgrounds on how to handle money and all, but I think we should celebrate it mm -hmm. as opposed to look at our differences. Mm -hmm. Sure, yeah. sure, sure. Just you wanna add anything? Well, you know, the that? thing is, is that um, the biggest thing is that we take our differences as a spending. I was a spender. Derek is very conservative. Um, I was a um, hard worker, and, and I like to save, but Derek was the budgeter. Mm -hmm. And sure. so we balance each other. And so one of the biggest things is um, we have to communicate. And that's I think that's where a lot of times in the breakdown of a couple, when there's one that's frugal, one and then one is a little liberal mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and then when I talk with a lot of families and they start talking about where the one spouse is starting to hide things mm -hmm. because the other spouse does not like to spend money and so that's where I think that's where we start seeing a lot of the breakdown mm -hmm. and one of the good things that we've been doing is really teaching our children sure. from my own experience and having right. You know, now my teenage daughter that's getting ready to go off to college is really teaching her, and she is really good at managing her money, mm -hmm. even at 17 and 18 wow. years old. Sure. Wow. And even my son that's 17, he is very good. Now I have that 12-year-old who has kind of not that, he's not there yet, mm -hmm. but I think that a lot of it is just the way that they've been seeing us. And so I've learned from Derek and he's also learned from me. Mm -hmm. oh. So he's also, I said, let loose a little bit. Let's, you know, kind of let loose a little bit. Yeah. Uh -huh. And then for me, I had to become that steward. And so that's sure. where we talk about, you know, I had to become a steward of my own finances. Uh -huh. Where it was okay to spend, but it's also very great to save. Mm -hmm. 
yeah well we are having a good time here talking to the west is in regards to finances and so we're going to take a little break and when we come back we're going to talk about some debt cancellation techniques Welcome back. We've been talking to Derek and Leslie Wesley um, about, uh, during the break, about children in poverty. Mm -hmm. And there is a study out that Hispanics and blacks are two times more likely to be in poverty than ca Caucasian children. Mm -hmm. How do we um, address that and how do we break that poverty cycle? One of the things I do is, is based on the information I've learned and what I've seen in the financial services industry is I, I, I always often compare what certain populations are doing, mm -hmm. why do they have money, mm -hmm. and why doesn't certain populations mm -hmm. ha not have money. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And when you really look at it, uh, it's, it's being taught mm -hmm. how to be a builder mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. as opposed to being a consumer. Mm -hmm. Sure. Our kids, our kids are taught get the best shoes, get the best clothes, right. get Very the Cadillac, get the car, the shiny things. Mm -hmm. So they go for the fool's gold. Right. It's shiny. Right. Mm -hmm. right. Some cultures, even the Jewish cultures, are taught that you are a builder first. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How do you be a builder first? They give first. Right. Exactly. They save second. Mm -hmm. sure. They spend last. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Our culture spends first. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Whatever we may have left, we might give, mm -hmm. yeah. and there's nothing left over to save. Sure. Mm -hmm. So it's just transitioning. So what's important, mm -hmm. is it the shiny things or is it the instant gratification or is it the delayed gratification sure. and learning how to manage money and teaching our children. Mm -hmm. right. When we find out how to do it, mm -hmm. the manual in the Bible, sure. we have to teach our children, teach our community, mm -hmm. and you'll see things start to change. It's not going to transform overnight, right. 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 but right. you will see kids become more, more mm -hmm. better stewards of their money as sure. long as their parents. So yeah. I think we've been taught bad habits. Mm. Got it. And then mm -hmm. once you yeah. teach bad habits, you teach your kids bad habits. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so until you break the bad habit mm -hmm. cycle, retransformation of how you think That's mm -hmm. right. and what money can do, mm -hmm. then you're going to continue to do mm -hmm. the same bad habits. Mm -hmm. So who's going to help me to break that habit? If I have, mm -hmm. I'm in a cycle where I'm just um, a right. spender or mm -hmm. I'm in debt you mm -hmm. know, over my head, who's mm -hmm. going to help me to break that cycle. I think our viewers yeah. want to know how yeah. can they get help? help. That's how we came up with Reposition Inc. Mm -hmm. Reposition Inc. was really a vision that Derek and I both had um, after reading a book by T.D. Jakes, which is Reposition Yourself. Mm -hmm. And it really helped us um, a lot to really kind of look at um, ways of where our mission part was mm -hmm. to give back because we had so much knowledge, mm -hmm. me being the more mm -hmm. <laughs> Liberal, liberal and <laughs> going through my own struggles uh -huh. and I always find that you're the best teacher when you've been there sure mm -hmm. and so Derek as the conservative to say okay I can bend a little so when we start uh, going out in the community mm -hmm. and really working with um, different individuals um, from buying a house to really managing we found that that really was our mission that mm -hmm. was our ministry that was part of yeah. what we wanted to do was to give back and so we're really coaches and that's what we tell everybody. Yeah. We're, we're money coaches, we're life coaches. Sure. Because part of that, breaking that, is that yes. we want to go out in the community. We want to teach people. We hold classes. Um, people call us. Um, we have on Facebook, we even have a Facebook site um, that people can leave questions. We, and I get questions, inbox questions about, you know, how do I balance, even okay. now with parents, you know, how do I balance right now for school? How do I juggle? Mm -hmm. Right. supplies and uniforms and going back to school on the budget that I have so mm -hmm. we are in we're, we're we get I get excited and we mm -hmm. get excited mm -hmm. about the fact that we want to teach people yeah. 
Yeah. Sure. So it's a mindset sure. change. Yeah. It's yeah. really impacting yeah. their lives by yeah. changing things that help them yeah. change things in their mind. Right. Yeah, that's the most difficult thing I see is that you you when you talk to people, why are you in debt? Mm. Uh, because in most things is they're they're buying things mm -hmm. that they think is going to make them happy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And yeah. they'll continue to buy those things right. that make them they think are going to make sure. them happy. Right. Mm -hmm. sure. And so that mindset, you become a consumer. Mm -hmm. I got to buy things to make me feel good mm -hmm. right. or to right, make right, me right. look happy or to make me feel successful. Yeah. And sure. when we don't know whose we are and who we are, yes. we mm -hmm. will sometimes go overboard and we'll find something. Mm -hmm. right. Whether it's I buy boats, whether I buy cars, sure. whether I buy jewelry and gold right. to try to make us happy. So I think one of the things we got to realize is first, I think it's important that we know who we are. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. And I think after we find out who we are and mm -hmm. whose we are, we can relax mm -hmm. and say, you know what? Mm -hmm. I don't have to buy all those mm -hmm. things. That's right. Mm -hmm. I can become a builder as opposed to a consumer. Sure. Yeah. So, sure. and that's not an overnight thing. It's, right. it's a mindset change. Right. Yeah. Right. And that right. doesn't yeah. happen over, that's overnight. Right. Yeah. That's yeah. Right. And you know, yeah. we're talking like about it. being a builder. Right. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm reminded of, Build, leaving a legacy. Mm -hmm. yeah. We talk about that, leaving a legacy That's for right. our children, and yeah. and we can say it's never too you know late to start. That's mm -hmm. right. Um, never too late to start training your children on how to build right. their wealth and build mm -hmm. finances. Right. So how? What are some of your? I guess let me just kind of, um, as we're closing up the the show here, mm -hmm. what are some of your components of a good financial plan um, for someone who's just starting out or who maybe is starting late? Hmm. I often tell kids is know what you're bringing in, know your income. Mm -hmm. Not your gross, but know your net. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What you have to actually bring home to work with. Sure. Mm -hmm. Understand that there are some options out there, pre-tax, that you can invest in mm -hmm. before you get your uh, chip paycheck that reduces the amount of income that you bring home, mm -hmm. but it's automatically uh, reduces also the amount of taxes that you have mm -hmm. to pay. Sure. Mm -hmm. Pre-tax dollars, right. most people call them 401ks, sure. 403bs, mm -hmm. participate in those. Mm -hmm. But once you have your money, you need to really understand what your net is. Start looking at your debt or what you owe. Mm -hmm. Then also look at your bills, mm -hmm. electric bill, gas mm -hmm. bill, the things that sure. recur every month. Mm -hmm. And if there's anything left over mm -hmm. after that, when you're writing mm -hmm. your budget, your spending plan, yes. that's what you decide on how much you, you're going to, first of all, you're going to give, mm -hmm. then you're going to invest. And then you're going to spend 80% of what's left over. Mm. But don't do it the opposite way. Right. Right. And right. so it is a, uh, we teach our kids, when you receive money, 10-10-80 mm -hmm. rule. Mm -hmm. It's very simple, the 10-10-80 rule, mm -hmm. as opposed to the 100% rule, mm -hmm. and then we pay left over. Wow. Mm -hmm. wow. This is so exciting. Um, you all have shared mm -hmm. some information that I believe will bless uh, mm -hmm. our viewing audience today mm -hmm. and help them to create a financial plan that will cause for them to become wealthy mm -hmm. uh, and successful at the same time. Yes. I'm reminded that the word of the Lord says that God gives us the power to get wealth. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. And I don't know about the two of you, <laughs> but I do know you a little bit yes. that you're mm -hmm. walking in that power as well. Yes. And we as well enjoy walking in the power that God mm -hmm. gives us to be able mm -hmm. to get wealth also. Right. But some key things that you said is that we have to be, first of all, good planners. Mm -hmm. um, we must be organized mm -hmm. and we must be disciplined mm -hmm. if we're going to walk in the wealth right. that God uh, has created and is giving to us mm -hmm. to be able to be successful and uh, as well wealthy. Mm -hmm. And so thank you so much for sharing the tidbits that you shared with us on today. We have enjoyed you being on our show. You have mm -hmm. impacted Tina and I, and uh, <laughs> as well, you've impacted Michiana. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. We appreciate it. Thank you. All right. Thank you for joining us for another episode of Be Inspired. We've all had a great time today as we've been talking to Derek and Leslie Wesley about building wealth and about changing your habits that will make you to become more wealthy and more healthy. Um, as you go about your life. So we ask you to tune in next time as we give you another episode of Be Inspired so that you can be inspired to be great.